Hello, I'm Adam Tomlinson and welcome back to the High B Buzz podcast. This week, I'm joined by a very special guest for our latest episode, former High B and now first team scout Kevin Harper chats to us about his time at Easter Road, the challenges that he's had to overcome in his life and his current role at the club. A popular figure on the terraces, a player blessed with pace and skill, and now someone who is helping to write the next chapter in Hibernian FC's history. I'm delighted to welcome Kevin Harper to the show. Kevin, how are you? I'm good, Adam. Thank you for that very good introduction. That's probably the best introduction I've ever had, I think. I'll do that. <laughs> there, was, there was no booze there, which is always good. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but... Other than that, I'm good. To that. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you again for taking the time out um, to join us here on the Hybe Buzz. Obviously, it's been what 24 years since you were first first at the club. It, it's funny how yeah. things do full circles, isn't it? But we'll start with you at your playing days. Um, born obviously um, in in Scotland. Was it was it your dream to to always play for? play for Hibernian to, to become a pro- professional footballer? No, I, I think it, it came about really strange. You know, I was, I was in a football from a young, a young age, but it was never one of the things. Yeah. I think back in the day, every boy wanted to be a footballer. I think every girl wanted to be a model. I think that was a thing that was, was back in the day. So, you know, you knew that not many people would. Yeah. And I think it, you know, I, I think the Stoneys well documented how a good I would get a uh, sign for Hibs. Alec Miller was watching his son on a different pitch. He had a commotion in a different pitch, turned around, watched me wrapping it up, and then decided he wanted to wanted to sign Simon. You know, thankfully, thankfully, it he did it. a little bit of work. You know, but uh, and that's that's how the story that's how the story goes. Really, it, it's funny that, isn't it? And and I can imagine now for you, especially as a as a scout, to look back at that story because you. You've always got to keep your wits about you. Yeah, you, you, you're always, you know, always looking, you know, I think, as, as, a, as a manager, as a coach, as a, as a scout, you know, just in football in general, I think what that happens a lot of the time. But I think, you, you know, I know certainly when there's a few games on the television and I'm flicking through, I'm watching different, you know, yeah, that's a bit of boring, I'm going that, I'll go watch that one. And, you know, that's that's what happens, you know, that you want the, you want the excitement, you want the puzzle. You know what is what is actually happening? Uh, where's the, where's the good stuff going to be? You know the five five or the six five or the you know uh, I think we're getting now we're getting some decent no nos and so you know but I think as as a player as as a coach as a manager as a as a scout we you know you want to entertain we're in an entertainment business you know but ultimately we want to entertain and win games. Yeah, absolutely. And what was it like then for you to? to sign for Hibs at, at the very beginning? I think, I think for me, it was, it was, it was really exciting times. You know, I had been training with them uh, and then I signed an s at 13, I think, maybe, maybe even earlier than that. Uh, and it was just that routine of going and training with them, you know, every Monday at Hamilton, you know, Mark Ferguson, Alan Ferguson's brother took it, you know, so he was, he was very, very good. And then you were just stepping into the, the unborn and then, Going in, it, you know, I went in just uh, a week before my my sixteenth birthday, full times at YTS, uh, and that was a real eye opener. You know, it was, you know, everybody saw, you know, our uh, footballers only the amount of time to go footballers only train for an hour, or you know, and I was there and having to get up at like six in the morning, you know, just to get through in time. And sometimes you weren't, and sometimes not get back to seven seven at night. The time all your tools were done, and then the travel back to Glasgow. So. You know, don't get me wrong. Once I got off the ground, staff and I get in there the first team and I get full tight, I was then it wasn't that long. <laughs> it wasn't that long. I was maybe back in the house by three o'clock, you know, but I wasn't in as early. So, you know, but it was it, it was it was a serial moment. You know, I think Ali like, I've I've said this a bit say Gallic Valley was was a good influential. You know, he took a chance on, you know, just a young kid, you know, I'm a young kid from from a scheme in, in Glasgow, you know, and that was that was that was a that was a that was a big thing for me. And you know, he he did he did guide me. He guided me really well. You know, when I when I broke in, there was a little bit of hype, obviously. You know, before I made my debut from 
you know, with it out within the club and with, and out with the club, uh, the fans, etc. And you know, for me through the the six years that I was there, you know, the fans were, were, were exceptional. Yeah, the fans love a player that's come through the academy as as well. Obviously, you were seventeen when you made your debut. Just tell us about the moment when you found out you were you were going to be in the match day squad. Um, and what that was like, because I can imagine as a 17 year old, even though you've had all this hype around you, it's still a, a fairly daunting moment. Yeah, it was, you know, I was, I was, I was training with the first team. I think, I think the biggest thing for me was when you get shouted over from playing with, with the reserves and the, the, the first team and a little bit short and the manager shouts you over and it's that run across your legs are shaking, you're nervous. You get so much, you don't want to, don't want to mess up. Oh, you're going into all these these players, season pros, and then to be travelling on the bus with the team up to up to Perth as it was, you know, it was it was nerve wracking as well. With going out and training, you know, just to warm up was 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 a serious moment. But in fairness to to the players and the team, they were fantastic with me. But you know, I, I remember sitting on the bench just thinking we went three one up. I think before that, and then I came on and then I was that sitting thinking, yes, that's me got the bonus. I think it was like two hundred quid or something. <laughs> you know, so I was like, yes, that's a bonus. And then Alec Will shouted me and then and then the proverbial hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the when when you were kind of on the pitch, did it take you a few moments to settle in or was it just the the buzz of of actually being on there? Did that take over? Yeah. It just I think there was many it was just the buzz again again, yeah, actually be able to put that strip on was great. And uh, going, on, going on, I was really, really nervous. I'll not, I'll not deny it. I won't say that it was calm as anything, but you know, the manager and the, the experienced players helped uh, make it, make it uh, as smooth as possible. But when you're three one up, you know, you're absolutely fine. You know, uh, you're no problem. Yeah, that's easy. We're going to total, total control of the game. So it was, it was, it was good. But once you get that first touch of the ball, then all the nerves go away, and you know, we just. The way you've been training for. Yeah, and when you've had that first taste of it, I guess then it's a, a case of you saying, right, well, I don't want to train with the reserves anymore. I really need to push myself on and, and get a starting shirt. That's that's what it's about. You know, that's that's a hundred percent true. You know, you don't want to go back to the reserves and that's no disrespect to the reserves, but you know, you want to you want to play in the first day. You know, I was fortunate enough that I was pretty much in the squad, you know, the most of the most of the rest of the season. So, you know, it was nice. But you know, you always go back to the reserves as well and enjoy your type there because that's your that's your you know, the guy staff boys that you got playing, you know, you've you've grew up with, you know, in, in, in that short period of time. You know, I was only was it I was in the ground staff for two and a bit years, but you know, I was I was in the first team, you know, after just a year and a half yeah, well just a year and a half, yeah, I made my debut from from within for like you know, it's 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 a big thing. It's a it's a big thing. The ground staff, it's a lot of, you know, positivity and, you know, you, you live and sort of die with them. It's, it's such, you know, you have your good times, you have your bad times, but, you know, Stuart Crawley as well, the physio was, was, was good. He was, he was, he was hard, but he was fair. You know, so you, you sort of grow into yourself, really. You know, you, I think you have to sink or swim, you know, and that's, you know, thankfully, you know, I could, I could swim a little bit. And you mentioned Alec Miller, obviously, and the role that he played in, in terms of taking a chance on you. When you then got into the first team, you were training with them regularly. How much help did he give you to, to help you develop and, and progress as a player to actually then get that starting shirt? Yeah, he was, he, he was, he was fantastic because he was very knowledgeable. You know, I think if you speak to any, any person that comes across, I just came across Alec Miller, he's very, very football. His football knowledge is incredible, second to none. So, you know, he could, he could help me understand where I had to go and how I had to improve. But I think the experienced players, I, I keep going back to that, the experienced players were really, really having a accident. So, Pat McGinnis, Paul Lennon, Keith Wrights, you know, Eddie McAllister, and Mike O'Neill, when they were there, I could go through the whole team. We had Mitchell Willem and so they, they were all, they were all ex experienced. You know, Jim Layton, even as a goalkeeper, and John Burridge as a goalkeeper, I felt that I took a little bit, I tried to get a little bit from every single one of them. Mm. You know, and the positive stuff that they did, don't make my own career, but if you can take as many good things from the experienced boys, because they've done, they've been there and done it, 
and it's fantastic. Yeah, and looking back at your your time at, at Hibs now, what what were your what were your highlights? What really really kind of stands out for you? I think I think the highlights is obviously making my debut. There's there's, there's a few uh, scoring in my first my first game. Well, you know, at least the road against Dundee United when we won five hell. But I think when I look back, it's probably the the, the goal with New Year's Day against against Hearts. You know, your your local rivals. You know, it's New Year's Day. It's at home. You know, I don't think it gets much bigger than that. That's when the world will be with me as well. And you know, probably my goal against Raiders would have been a two one uh, a header. Uh, that probably put me from, you know, sort of being a little bit more into, you know, probably, you know, nation mode, if that makes sense, you know, because there was so much hypo after that. Uh, but I think also when I came on as in a school against Hearts to beat them, we, we drew to each, I think it was, we beat them, no, we beat them to one bad of the very school. And that pretty much, you know, stopped them, made it, they couldn't win the league. So, you know, it's always, always good to stay up, stay up local rivals, city rivals, and get one on in there as well. Yeah, I'm sure the the Hearts goal in 1998 was one that um, that the fans obviously remember really fondly as well, the Maisie run and the excellent finish. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, that's it. So, you know, I, I think I think I, I done well against against Hearts and, and the bigger teams. You know, I think I stepped up as a big game player. But, you know, I think over the, over the course, my time at Hibs was really, really enjoyable. Yeah, and I guess the only thing for you was not having that that opportunity to almost say goodbye to the supporters when when you left for what was a a, a big figure um yeah. 300, 300 gram wasn't it to to yeah. David to? yeah i think that was a, that's the biggest that's the biggest issue that i have and i've said that you know several, several occasions you occasions know, no because i came through there as a kid and you know the fans that take me to heart you know and not to be able to acknowledge their you know their support of me over that couple over that period over these six years was 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 hard. Yeah. What what would what did they mean to you, the supporters? I, I think it was just it was it almost feel like a family, you know, because I, I was one of theirs. You know, it was it was there was a lot, as I say, there was a lot of hype and, you know, probably you know, looking at it probably didn't fulfill the hype, you know. But, you know, I stood up with big games and you know, for me, even just go back there gives me gives me a buzz all the time. Goes back go back to Easter Road although although it's changed a little, just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> since I was there, but still, still a real, real was an enjoyment back there. In my role covering Hibernian FC home and away, I'm constantly using my phone, tablet or laptop, and I know the importance of staying safe online. That's why I use NordVPN. By using NordVPN, this protects my personal data and bank details from hackers and gives me peace of mind whilst traveling and working on the move. Thanks to our great partnership with NordVPN, you can grab your exclusive deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash highbees or use the code highbees to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan. An additional month for free and a bonus gift. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to, to talk about, um, and it's something that you're obviously very involved in, is um the racism around the game um obviously something you're very proud of is that you were the first black player to play for Hibernian FC um, at the time did that feel like a a significant step uh, to be honest at the time I didn't know I wasn't aware uh, I wasn't aware that I was the first ever black player to play for Hibs uh, so it was it was it was no it was no real issue with it you know no real big fans there uh, but I think certainly knowing that I was, I was uh, probably the first black kid as well to come through the ranks in Scottish football, you know, to play in the, in the teams, uh, first, first team was, was really, really big for me as well. Uh, and I, th I don't think there's many came through the ranks the way that I had, you know, black of ethnic players, even today, today, to, today on that, you know, so the, I was. One of our kind, Ted <laughs> Warmies and what? What what was that like as a a young black footballer playing up here, obviously in Scotland? It was it was it was it was difficult. It was difficult. You know, you got your you got the racial abuse. You know, you hear so much so much spoken about. 
uh, and it was, it was hard to deal with, you know, because I must admit, I got it as a, in, when I was at Oys Club, but I never had a thought that I would get it in, in professional football. And that was probably just how naive I was, you know, how naive, you know, I just looked at football and thought, oh, it's, you know, I'll never get that. That's just in the Oys Club. But as you got to the, as you got to the progression game, I got it from, from season pros and, and from, you know, fans, which is disappointing, but we're still getting it, you know, black and ethnic minority players are still getting it. So, you know, it's, it's a football problem. It's a societal problem. And until we, we, we attack it head on, it's always going to be a societal and football problem. How did you, well, whilst that's all going on and obviously you've, you've kind of trying to focus on playing football and enjoying yourself, but how do you deal with that? Cause I can imagine it's incredibly, incredibly hard. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. And to be honest, I, I couldn't answer that. I don't know how I dealt with it. If, I, if I'm honest with you, you know, it's, I grew up in a, a rough area. So probably that was, that was probably the making of me, uh, because I was, I would say that I was used to it, but I got it, you know, when I was out and about, but I think in, in, in my area, I mean, I grew up at Bosso Park, I was probably one of the poster boys there and everybody was. It almost like put their arms around you and went, no, you're one of us, you know? And I think that's when you go back in, mm -hmm. when I went back to it, that's probably what, what it was. Uh, but you know, I, I think that's probably uh, the only thing I can think of. Mm. Cause I can imagine in, in those moments, you, it, it's incredibly hard to see it, but you're almost an inspiration to people of a, of a similar, similar background in terms of obviously where you were brought up or or other kind of youngsters that that are um, of an ethnic minority that want to become a, a professional footballer. I think I think I think you you probably I, I didn't I certainly didn't look at that at, you know seventeen when I was made my debut. Yeah, like as as I, as I get older, I realised, and that's why I, I speak so much about racism and football and equality. You know, because I have a, a duty. I feel that I have a duty as an ex professional footballer to try and make change. Whether that whether I have a big enough platform to do that is I don't know. But if it can if it can reach one person, you know, one person, then that they reach maybe two people, then there's there's a start. And that's the main aim for me, you know, when I speak about it. It's not about Kevin Harper, it's about showing up the issue that is still there to this day after, you know, twenty, twenty plus years where I've been retired for twelve years now, you know, and it's still going. You know, now I was, I, I'd been fighting, I've been fighting and talking about racism for 20, 20 odd years, you know, just, uh, just 18 to 20 years. So, you know, I don't think anything's changed. Well, it's changed a little bit, but it's not, it's not to change it to where it should be. Yeah. I, w I was going to ask how, if you felt like there was any progression being made over the years from your playing days to, to current day now. But, I think, I think, I think the, those, we speak about it more, mm -hmm. you know, but I think if it is there, is there action change? Has there been actual change? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if you look at, there's probably more black and ethnic players playing, but less coaches, you know, certainly in Scotland, there's, you know, you've got Giovanni Van Bronckhorst and you've got Marvin Bartley, you know, Giovanni is, is done really, really well in his career. He's managed managed the other clubs like with Mar Marvin Barley has came through at Livingston. So he's had, hasn't had to then necessarily, you know, uh, apply for a, a vacancy, you know, and, uh, and he's doing, he's doing well. He's, he's leading, he's the leading light in, in racism, uh, which is, which is good. We need more of that, but ultimately do I think it's changed? I don't think it's changed that much. No. You obviously mentioned, um, Van Bronckhorst and and Marvin Bartley just just then. Obviously, you were the first black manager to be hired by a Scottish club for for fifteen years when you were appointed by Albion Rovers. How how difficult did you find it to to get into coaching and and management and to get that kind of job? I think it's I think it's difficult. You know, I think at the end of the day, I've said this and it's been well documented. I don't I don't think I was the best candidate for 
all of the, uh, all of the jobs that I applied for. And I'm well aware of that. I'm a realist, but I think certainly for, you know, a vast number of them, I was the best candidate, uh, and ultimately, you know, I had the best experience, you know, and I'm talking about players that have went into management with no management, management experience. Uh, but at the end of the day, chairman decided that someone else was felt that, you know, they deserved an interview. And I think for me, it's about, it's not about getting a job because of whack. It's about having that equal opportunity yeah. and people looking past, whether you're black or whether you're white, looking at what you've done in the game. And I get that, you know, everybody needs a chance somewhere. You know, I think, I don't think I was a, a, a failure at Albion Novels. You know, when I was in, it was sort of, I think, you know, seven points adrift. You know, we stayed up with six points, you know, so the, the turnaround was, was successful. The second year was, you know, we kept him in the league, you know, and for me, that's a success. That was a success for Albion Novels. You have to, it has to be relative. You know, I'm not going to have, a 75% win rate when you've got a team in a budget that's the lowest in the league. Yeah. You know, you're going to, you have to have, you're going to lose more than you're probably going to win. You know, but at the end of the day, did I do the job that I was asked of? Yes, I did. You know, the, the league, are, the club are still in the league. You know, and at, the, at the end of the day, when I went out there, probably I was the only person that believed that we could stay up. Yeah. Do, do you think more needs to be done? in terms of making those opportunities equal and in terms of BAME candidates in, in football, getting more of a, an equal opportunity. I, th I think, I think in any walk of life, you, you deserve an equal opportunity. No matter if you're a woman, if you're, you know, a man, if you're black, if you're white, if you're, you know, whatever religion, sexual orientation, it should, it should be, it should be a diverse culture. We are a diverse culture. And just because you're of a minority, I don't see why you shouldn't get an equal opportunity because you're still a person, no matter what way you look at it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and you're obviously heavily involved with the sporting bodies in regards to creating equal opportunities to try and stamp racism out, out of the game. It, it's a difficult question, this, but, but what, what more needs to be to be done to, to get the message across. I think we have to take it seriously first and foremost, you know, we can't, we can't, we have to, we have to make sure that there's a zero, zero tolerance aspect to it, because I think right at this present moment in time, it's almost a slapping and slapping the wrist and say, don't do that again. You know, if you, if you do have racial, if you, if you, if you have racial abuse, at football, we should treat, we should treat it the same as if it's walking down the street. People would go up to court and they would get, we have to hand out bigger sentences for it because it's not acceptable. It's just almost, it almost feels to me that we're just doing it because there's a big, you know, a big song and dance about it rather than actually doing it to go, you know what, this is wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And. And just to, to now move on and, and talk about your career, you mentioned obviously your, your time at, at Albion Rovers just then, obviously after your retirement, you've always been close to Hibernian FC coming back, doing bits with Hibs TV interviews around the club. And now you're, you're back as, as first team scout, just talk us through how that opportunity came about and, and how happy you are to, to be back involved with the club. Absolutely delighted to be back and involved with the club. You know, I think for me, it's, it's always a club that's really close to my heart. As I've said, you know, when you made, when you made your debut for the club, it always stays there. And it came about really by chance. I was actually doing a battle of hospitality for the club and I'd spoke, I, I just, I was going to another, another park to do some more and I passed Ben, you know, made a, made a quick chat, you know, in, a, in the corridor. Uh, between the lounges and then he said, why don't you come through to the training ground? We can sit down and have a chat about trying to get, you know, more people involved. So that's how it happened. Sat and spoke, spoke with Ben and spoke with Sean, who was the then manager at the yeah. and Ian. Uh, and we just, we arranged another couple of calls, couple of meetings and, you know, we, we felt that, you know, I could help the club and the scouting area. 
<laughs> it sounds like a silly question, this. Um, but I'm sure it's one that, that some fans think, well, why are you asking that? But at the same time, I think it's that broad that it, it's worth asking and getting your point of view on is what what is a a first team scout? What what does that entail as a as a role? Because a lot of people think, well, it's just going and, and watching players and, and writing notes, but it, it's just more it's a lot more than that, isn't it? You do research on players, you know, you're watching, you're watching lots of, what, lots of football, you know, yeah, it can be good, but it can be monotonous as well. You know, you're, you're looking at players that the, the, the managers do you interested in, or, you know, the head of recruitment, what, what you look at, you're going and speaking, you know, you're going and seeing players live, you're seeing them on, on screen, and then you're reporting back, you know, and it's, there's a, there's a bit of pressure on it because ultimately you have to say, well, you believe a certain player would be good enough for the club, first and foremost, a good fit. Is he better than what they have? Is he, is he, is he or she the best person for that role? You know, so, and then, yeah, there it's up to the head of recruitment that passes it over to the manager and then the manager takes that as well. You know, your, your advice and, you know, your thought process is, is important, uh, but ultimately at the end of the day, you know, I can only be honest whether I think they're, they're good or not, you know, no matter, no matter the baggage, I think the biggest thing that you have to do is take yourself out of all the hype from what you've heard of, you know, and, and give an honest opinion. It's easy to say that, yeah, I really like this. I really like this player, but, you know, but ultimately is he going to be a right fit for, for the club and for the manager and the way they stay up play? So, you know, there's lots of permutations that you have to put into your report and, you know, feedback, you know, because ultimately I'm not saying that the manager's going to go and take and going to go and buy a player on my say so but at the end of the day it could be the difference between him saying yeah I want more information on this player or you know no and then two months down the line the player that he says no becomes a superstar and he's pointing that finger and going what are you thinking <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting I think because there's there's lots of elements of of being a scout, I think people, when you kind of, or when someone goes and watches a game, it's looking at a player and say, right, well, does he have a good game or not? But yeah. you, you're looking at lots of different elements, aren't you? You're looking at the technical elements, what they're like on the ball, the tactical awareness, but also the mentality of a, of a player, whether they're willing to do the, or put in the, the hard yards, whether they can yeah. grab the game by a scruff of the neck. How hard is that element to, to judge? It's, 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 it's difficult. It's difficult. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not as simple as everybody thinks, but I think what you have to do is you have to take in account, you know, elements are they playing for, playing at home or they playing away, but different are they, what are they saying and what shouting at them, the fans are getting on their back, you know, the manager's giving them like instructions, are they willing to go and, you know, if they're, if they're a wide player like I was, are they willing to go and take the player on inside, are they willing to take him on in, outside? You know, all these different things is he what willing to walk back and chase back and work, you know, sacrifice himself for the team first and foremost. But when he gets the opportunity, have the has the have they got that ability to go and create and, you know, or stop it or stop, you know, the other the oppo opposition scoring or have an attempt. You know, so there's there's lots of different aspects of it uh, that you have to be aware of in that in the games that you see. You know, you're not just going to look at the player at once. You're going to probably look at them three, four, five, maybe six times. You know, make your report, and then someone else will probably go and see them. You know, and then they'll make that they'll make that response on that, and then ultimately either the manager or the assistant manager will go. I think both of them would probably go. So you know, there's you have to build that. You have to build a picture of what you think. You know, on several occasions, not just one occasion, uh, because the I can't, I can't think and I can't imagine that a club would just go and buy a player without it, you know, on one scouting report. I don't think that would, that would be kamikaze stuff, uh, you know, but it, ultimately, you know, that's, that's a rule. You know, you, you have to be, you know, a benefit for the club, you know, and give your honest, I give my honest opinion, no matter if I like the player or not, you know, or from what I've heard, you know, you could hear he's an absolute, you know, waste of time. You know, you go and see him and he's done really, really well. You go and see him again and again and he's doing really well. So, 
you know, that's ultimately, you, you have to be honest and you have to, you know, for me, it's about helping the club. If I can help the club in that small little way, then that's, that's perfect because the club will be good to me. And how, you, you mentioned right at the start, the way that, that obviously you were scouted, um, they were watching someone else and they, they came and they heard that everyone talking about yourself. When you're sat there in a, in a stadium or on the side of a pitch, you have to watch obviously one single player in terms of their movements, everything that, that we just mentioned, but on the flip side, you could be watching that game and there could be someone else that kind of yeah. catches, catches your eye. How difficult is it to find that balancing act of actually seeing the trends of the game, but also focusing on your one player? No, I, I think it's, I think it is difficult because you, you can't, that player's not always going to be involved mm. all of the time. You know, so you have to, you have to have a, a vision of seeing everything really, you know, because there might be, there might be some, something that you pick up that, you know, somebody's not picked up on that player or on a player that's playing, you know, but that's where you, that's where you have to do it. You have to be concentrated and not just be focused solely on the player and be just focused on the game. Yeah. You have to probably, you know, that, that player that you're going to see is probably taking, I would say 75%, 80% of your you know, concentration, but also you have to have that other 20, 15, 20%, you know, of looking at the whole game and other players there, because you know, some of the players, you have a thought process and what they are, but there'll be some that you might not know. And that's where you have to come and build your, build your database up. And then you can go to, you know, I can go to the, the head of the and say, I, we were, I went and saw this, this person, but maybe have a look at this person, keep an eye on that. You know, he could be a potential. Uh, uh, he done really well. Also, it advise what he done well. You know, there's no point in me just going. By the way, he done well, and then the head didn't treat me. Yeah. He's yeah. been like, "What, Kevin? What are you? What are you actually talking about?" You know, so you have to be in depth, but sure and speak with it as well. Yeah. Uh, and have you been mainly scouting in in Scotland, the UK? Have you been further afield than that? Just, just main, mainly at the moment in Scotland, because obviously the new manager changed. And then it was the end of the season, so yeah. Well, what, what was, what was with the previous managers ripped up, you know, and now the, the new managers came in, you know, he'd be looking at different targets as well. And it'll be good to get sat down with him and, you know, see what type of player he's wanting and what type of, what type of attributes that he likes, you know, because all managers are different and style of play will be different, you know, could be different. The, the system could be, be different. So the players that Sean was, was looking, looking at might not fit in the system that the new managers, you know, that Lee's want to do. So these are, these are things that you have to sit down with the manager and the head that recruitment and, 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 you know, I am things out so that I get, so that I, in a personal and selfish space, have a, have a clear knowledge of what the club want. Absolutely. Well, Kevin, I think we'll leave it there, but thank you. That was uh, interesting, fascinating, eye-opening. Um, and I hope that everyone has enjoyed listening to the latest episode of the High Buzz. I think it's clear to to hear and see your affinity with Hibernian FC, but also that a lot more needs to be done to stamp racism out of the game. Um, and really, from a personal note, the the scouting stuff I find absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Anyway, so Kevin, thank you again Cheers, uh, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Cheers, Steve. Easy. Catch you later. All roads lead to Easter Road. Join the journey.